Jeez. Women are more likely to rage war. Women. Women. Girls. Girls. Older single women. 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 Women have more STDs. Even conservative women. Older women lie to younger women. But modern women. Do women really deserve to vote? Pearl Davis is a red pill YouTuber whose channel has exploded over the past year, now sitting at one and a half million subscribers. Most people will be exposed to Pearl through like TikTok clips. All the women disappeared tomorrow, men would be fine outside of reproduction. You know, very similar to like Andrew Tate's marketing strategy. There's already been countless takedowns of Pearl Davis, and a lot of them bring up valid points, but they all fall in the same trap that most YouTube takedown videos do. They all suck. They suck because creators put entertaining content first. And fair enough, but most people just end up picking low-hanging fruit, name-calling, digging up old drama. Nobody cracks the core issue with these people. The issue is that uninformed grifters hold a psychic monopoly over your thoughts and ambitions, especially men. Pearl isn't a particularly unique case that needs to be dealt with specifically in this space. Rather, she's another example of an archetype that comes and goes on the internet. So rather than give you a drama video, I'm gonna use Pearl as an example of what's wrong with this space as a whole. Subscribe to Archad if you wanna be saved from psychic terrorism and have 10 kids. Before we really get started, I'd like to speak on the red pill as a whole, and why it's so pervasive. It's nearly impossible to criticize red pill ideology effectively. This is because, like all invasive ideologies, the red pill operates like a western religion. There's a hierarchy to climb, doctrine to follow, sins to avoid, but most importantly, there's one highest possible good that is objective perfection. In Christianity, this is the Christ figure, which all adherents aim to align themselves with. In the red pill, it is the idea of the high value or the high status male. The high status male, like Christ, is not up for interpretation. He is, among other things, always rich, always powerful, and always hypersexual. And the red pill is united in their belief of this objectivity. Now what makes the ideology so hard to criticize is that adherents must make assumptions about reality for the ideology to make sense in the first place. In the same way Christians do, Christians believe in the Bible as the word of God and use it to frame their worldview. This reality is fundamentally different from that of an atheist, who takes the Bible to be complete fiction. An atheist and a Christian can't come to an agreement if they have fundamentally different beliefs about the nature of reality. If a Christian were to cite biblical scripture to support an argument against an atheist, this would be completely meaningless because the atheist holds no belief in biblical scripture. For the atheist, this would be analogous to someone citing Iron Man 2 as proof of the existence of jet-propelled suits. And all these arguments also apply to red pillars, who cite the existence of an objective nature of men and women and the objectivity of a high-status male. If a red pillar believes in a single objective concept of masculinity, and a non-red pillar believes in a spectrum of masculine gender identity, the two can't come to an agreement because they believe in fundamentally different realities. Now there's also a high-status female in the red pill, but I'll touch more on that later. A lot of the Red Pill people, and especially Pearl Davis, what defines their style of content is the amount of positing they do. Pearl just says things constantly as if they are known facts. That men from the ages of 20 to 80 all think that girls are the most attractive around 22 to 24. Okay. If a girl is a virgin when she's married, she has an 80% chance of having a happy marriage after 10 years. Men are biologically predispositioned to be attracted to purity. <laughs> because people in the top 20% of beauty, they get, they get modeling contracts. Actually, 8% of the US population claims they've been falsely accused. And and part of what makes her content and other Red Pill content so alluring is the amount of information these people just pack into a sentence. It, it feels like you're learning esoteric knowledge because they don't really give you time to unpack anything they say. Author, podcaster Sam Harris speaks on this uh, and he's explaining why it's counterproductive to platform conspiratorial thinkers, but it also applies to Pearl and a lot of the Red Pill people. And there, there are also people who are so confabulatory that they're making such a mess with every sentence insofar as you're even trying to interact with what they're saying, you're going, you're by definition going to fail and you're going to seem to fail to a sufficiently large uninformed audience where it's gonna be a net negative for, for the cause of truth, no matter how good you are. If I'm on Fresh and Fit and I say something like this, the hypergamous nature of females in the Pacific Northwest make it so that the masturbation rate of mid-status millennial men has tripled compared to the global baseline, specifically with men under 5'9". You'd have to derail the conversation for like 15 minutes just to unpack that one sentence. For an audience that doesn't give a f if it's true or not. And this issue gets worse because this content is so clippable. Take what I just said, put the Sigma music in the background, and f 
subway server footage on the bottom, all of a sudden some 18 year old doom scrolling at 3 a.m. trying to go to bed feels like he's unlocking hidden knowledge about women. The hypergamous nature of females in the Pacific Northwest make it so the masturbation rate of mid status millennial men has tripled compared to the global. Let's look at this claim that Pearl makes. I mean, I think people have always cheated. <laughs> I mean, I think 8,000 years ago, it was like 17 women to every one man. So men have always had multiple girls. I lost it when I heard this because this sounds absolutely f It took me 20 minutes to find this study. What the study is claiming is that male fertility dropped to these levels 8,000 years ago. Not that it had always been this way. And a further analysis of the evidence used in this study showed that men dying young due to warring clans during the shift of societal structures in the agricultural revolution was the most likely cause for the drop in fertility. Given the analysis, the data ends up being completely irrelevant to Pearl's argument about men having multiple partners. Partners. And it also implies that 8,000 years ago, 94% of men never had sex, which I could use to support a counter-argument that men have always been virgins and that virginity is the natural state of man. And the funny thing is that this study is actually more useful in supporting that argument than Pearl's. This is just one example of how complicated statistics are. I fact-checked her like 10 times writing this video, and she so often misinterprets statistics. I'm sure she gets it right sometimes, like I don't think she's an idiot. The amount she gets it wrong is enough to write off everything she says for me. Like, I'm sorry, you can't be right half the time. I don't trust you. As with many people in this space, Pearl isn't perfect. She actually doesn't even meet her own standards of how women should behave. She has a self-made career on social media. Yeah, so yeah, could yeah. we argue that we cheat by having open Instagram account while in a relationship? She's extremely opinionated, unmarried, and childless at the ripe age of 26, nearing old age by her own standards. What do men value? Youth. How are they getting youth when the average age of first marriage for women in the US is 28.6 years old? I've noticed a lot of therapists are like older single women, and I'm kind of like, if you can't maintain a relationship, why would I take advice from you? <laughs> if Pearl flip sides and had a podcast about how she was a strong, independent woman and women don't need men to be successful, I'd believe her entirely. The same goes for someone like Rollo Tomasi, the author of The Rational Male and the so-called godfather of The Red Pill. Based on his advice, based on what he says, you'd expect him to be like some gigachad millionaire, some Dan Bilzerian type. He's just this unremarkable, like, normal-looking dude who's been married for 30 years. Rolo Tomasi is a better example of monogamy than he is of the red pill. Like, <laughs> it's f***ing insane. The issue is that most of the red pill people are just nerds and theory crafters. There's so many online manosphere spaces that just tinker with the formula on how to make the perfect man. It's the same mentality as someone planning a speedrunning route. It's this fantasy ideal that only exists on paper of an optimized playthrough of life itself. Beyond the obvious hypocrisy I just mentioned, there's this subtle underlying hypocrisy that I'm sure Pearl isn't even aware of. I'm going to explain using horseshoe theory. Horseshoe theory is the idea that the fringes of a spectrum have more in common than they do with the center. Take the far right and the far left for example. Both operate on emotion rather than rationality. Both believe humanity is impure and unhealthy and must correct itself. Both believe in specific categories of people that need to be defined. Representing this on a chart would look more like a horseshoe with both sides in opposition to the middle. This also works with the manosphere and its similarities to feminist ideologies. Both scapegoat, both operate on emotion, both claim they are oppressed, both aim for privilege under the guise of equality, and this is all in opposition to a moderate viewpoint which claims that both genders have unique challenges and advantages. Pearl Davis and the Red Pill fall into the exact same traps as the ideologies it critiques. I read The Rational Mail unironically when I was 22. It was the start of 2020, start of COVID, and in the span of six months, I broke up with my girlfriend of three years, lost 80 pounds, and became a weed dealer. So I was on a f roll. The Rational Mail made me feel like I was learning something that no one had ever taught me. Like I was uncovering the Dead Sea Scrolls, and it was blowing my immature mind. After finishing the book and putting what I learned into practice, I found it worked very well for what I wanted at the time. I was seeing multiple women at once, I was going on f tons of Tinder dates, I had game at the bar. My life felt like it was amazing at the time, but something was slowly eating away at me because I realized I was being a f***ing psychopath. Nobody knew the real me, and I wouldn't tell anyone the truth about anything. I would just put up this aloof front in order to remain mysterious and seem busy. And it worked super well. It would work as well on a man as it would a woman, because you're being a psychopath. And worst of all, I was hurting the people I was seeing. This story brings us to the cardinal sin of Pearl's philosophy and the red pill at large. It offers no solutions. The red pill teaches you to treat women like objects and to become increasingly paranoid 
of women who don't reach your near impossible standards. There's no path for growth in your character or the possibility of family creation. There's just you, alone at the gym, constantly paranoid, these hoes are gonna drag you off your grind and gold dig you for your $300 a month sneaker flipping business. Pearl's podcast is like the same as me starting a podcast about all the symptoms of lymphoma. If you looked into lymphoma, it's really scary. It's like having a flu, but you have cancer. Have you ever thought about that before? You should think about this every day. You should let it control all your actions and decisions. And you should keep watching my podcast to learn about all the ways lymphoma can harm you and kill you. Replace lymphoma with women and you have the red pill. This is the same reason people critique university leftists, communists, Antifa. They complain about all the woes of the modern world with absolutely no solution. Just increasing paranoia and thousands of retarded books to understand it all. It's lazy philosophy and people are starting to realize this. Even Sneeko is turning against it for the same reason. Then I don't even know what the red pill idea of a high value man is. is. Is it just being rich? Like what's the point of having all this money and not having a family? I'm not saying there aren't major flaws in the modern dating scene. There are. The world is f***ed. The male virginity rate is skyrocketing and Tinder is an actual demonic entity. Some of what Pearl says is right, but that doesn't mean she's helpful. And when dealing with something as important as this, solutions are all that matter. In conclusion, I'd like to compare Pearl and the rest of the Red Pill community to Redditors. Specifically, this famous Redditor who lined up his entire hot sauce collection on the stairs of his building. Pearl is the Redditor, a beta who spends too much time indoors and gets her kicks by telling others they're wrong. The hot sauce collection is Pearl's collection of statistics and facts. And like the hot sauce collection, it's a collection for collection's sake. That is to say, it's f***ing useless. Most of these are bad and just shouldn't be used. A lot of them are probably very old and basically all of them just aren't that impressive. The Redditor, squealing with glee, shows me his hot sauce collection as I stand at the bottom of the stairs, listening to him soying at the variety and quantity of his hot sauce, just as Pearl does with her red pill lore. My response, I ignore him, step over the hot sauce and continue on with my journey, just as you should do with Pearl and the rest of the red pill.